Well, then they go and harass other good police officers like Shane Harger, who we had on the show last night. He was threatened because he took an oath to uphold the Constitution. So it's high time that we get these bad guys out of there. Now, one of the agencies that's also hoping to hide their abuse is the DHS. Now, they're being called out because they're attempting to stifle debate on its agents using deadly force against rock throwers on the border. When a young person throws a rock across uh, the border, uh, towards the border or border agents, some agents respond with a gun and others don't seem to respond at all. Uh, there seems to be some uh, need for consistency in the response to these incidents and how we treat it. Senator, uh, transparency and a use of force uh, in any law enforcement agency is critical. Uh, if you don't have the trust and the cooperation of the people you serve and they don't understand or, or and they're not knowledgeable of your policies, it makes that trust and cooperation very difficult. I have not been in a law enforcement agency in which the specifics of the use of force uh, were, were not made available to the, to the general public. And I Exactly. The public needs to have some transparency with its federal agencies. Look at how heavily redacted that report is that was issued by the agency's inspector general. Now, the report recommends that Customs and Border Protection train their agents to de-escalate these encounters by taking cover, moving out of range, and using less lethal weapons rather than putting themselves in a position where they have to use deadly force. Now, the report highlights how the DHS has just been attempting to mute this debate after more than 20 people have been killed since 2010 by border agents. Now, in response to this report, the chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, he rejected its recommendation saying, just to say that you shouldn't shoot at rock throwers or vehicles in our environment is very problematic and could potentially put border patrol agents in danger. Oh, from these pesky rock throwers at the border. Meanwhile, if the rock throwers would just walk across the border, we'd let them right in. We'd welcome them with open arms. But since they're throwing rocks, they're a danger to America. Don't you love how we're just supporting, you know, all in the name of national security? And meanwhile, if you want to go head over to Mexico to be an illegal immigrant, you're going to be met with harsh detentions, you'll be regarded as a felon, and at any time you could be subject to a citizen's arrest. They do not tolerate illegal immigration. And despite how harsh they are there with their undocumented immigrants, no one in Mexico is calling for reform. Nope, the fleeing population just comes to the U.S. and demands that we reform our immigration policies. Now, other countries, of course, are like Mexico as well in that they only allow people to emigrate to their country if they're going to contribute to their national progress. So I don't understand why we here in the USA, what they're saying is that, well, you know, if we let in everybody and anybody, it'll help boost our economy. That is such a farce because if that was the case, why haven't they boosted the economy in their own country? It just doesn't make sense. And basically, if you're going to be a tax burden on society, you're going to be a tax burden on society. And it's we, the taxpayers, who are going to have to come up with the bill. It's insane. We're the only country that does this. I mean, I've, I've, I've looked into moving into other countries, and it's, it's completely difficult. So this is an insane argument, which we obviously have not heard the end of. But while these federal agencies are fighting to keep all of their actions private, you and I are our privacy, it's up for grabs. So it's a new day, of course, and there's just another Orwellian move by Google to violate our right to privacy and our right to peaceably assemble. They have just sought a patent to transmit your cell phone videos to law enforcement. Now the patent says that this means that an event of interest has likely occurred, so it'll just send a signal to an organization like the news or a publisher of a periodical or to a public blog. Oh, so they can keep up to current events. But they're also going to send it to law enforcement agencies. So, of course, a system can be easily exploited in order to surveil and monitor protesters. And just like we reported yesterday about the remote kill switch that authorities are wanting to put into your car, Apple also put out an issue for a patent in 2012 that would allow them to disable your iPhone. So if a police officer wanted to render you incapable of documenting or filming an encounter or a protest, they can just shut off your phone if you reach a sensitive area. 
So again, why are they why are they making these things? It's not for the greater good. We know how these things are going to be used. And time and again, these agencies like Google have just proven that they're in collusion with the NSA and with big government and these Orwellian tactics. It's getting quite frightening, people. So we've got to vote with our dollars and don't buy their crappy products. Now, stick around because coming up, we're going to have some very pumped up interviews with Jakari Jackson. We'll be right back. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen, and everyone knows I'm a huge football fan. I watched my first Super Bowl way back in 1976 when the Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the heavily favored Minnesota Vikings at the time. Then there was the heated rivalries between the Cowboys and the Steelers during the 1970s. I loved watching those football games. In fact, I had the uh, the chance to meet legendary wide receiver Drew Pearson recently, who actually let me hold his Super Bowl ring and told me if I dropped it, he'd kick my ass. I grew up with football. My son Kellen was an outstanding quarterback in his high school for the famous West Texas Abilene Eagles. It's the greatest sport of all time, and it's uniquely American, and I'm very proud of that. And I, I can understand why people are so passionate about the game. But I wish people were just as passionate about our Constitution and our civil liberties, which are currently eroding right before our very eyes. And it seems as if football is now being used as a tool of distraction, providing an unsuspecting cover for curtailing our civil liberties and the Super Bowl is the poster child, if you will, for the police state. And once again, we turn now to InfoWars reporter Jakari Jackson, who is on the scene there in Times Square. And uh, what kind of reaction have you gotten from, first of all, have you run into any Info Warriors? I'm sure people recognize you on the street. Actually, we have run into an Info Warrior. Come on in here, sir. Uh, and tell us, tell us your name. Hi, my name is Pat. Pat, okay, so. So you're an info warrior. How long have you been watching the show? Uh, just about a year now. 
Okay. Yeah. So Matt was watching us. He saw us on the uh, Alex Jones radio show today, and he said, I want to come down there, and I want to show my support. Because it's viewers like this guy, this guy who supports the show, who watches the show, who not only supports us like that, but he comes out here and he supports real information. So, sir, let me ask you, you know, I don't know if you're a native New Yorker or not, but what do you think about this scene, about the police state, about the TSA-style checkpoints at the Super Bowl, about the pat-downs at the Super Bowl? What do you think about that? I just think it's crazy. I just think the whole scene is madness. And, uh, you know, the increased police presence here is just insane. I mean, you could probably, you know, field a small army of people. And uh, it's just absolutely crazy. I, I don't really believe in all this stuff. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the police state is real. I mean, you know, there's, there's some good pol police officers out there, but there's also some, you know, some ones that are, uh, you know, Violating the system and violating people's Fourth Amendment rights. Cause we heard about the stop and frisk and the things going on here in New York. And yes, I will say we have encountered uh, many uh, gentle, uh, pleasant officers since being here. But that's not to say that there aren't things going on in other places. Now, sir, let me ask you about the media coverage of this event. Of course, you've seen you know, nothing but the Broncos and the Seahawks, and it's left and right and Coke and Pepsi and red and blue. So we see that angle of it, but not too many people are talking about the other angles, the uh, the sex trafficking that that uh, accompanies events like this. Also about the police state, the ratcheting up, the the stop and frisk, the the NYPD cameras everywhere, the pat downs at the Super Bowl. But what do you think about the media coverage outside of the alternative media for this event? I think the media is just a big distraction. What's really going on in the country, and I think a lot of people uh, are just not aware of what's going on. Um, you know, there's some people that are aware, but, you know, they're afraid to come forward. And it's, uh, you know, we need a lot more people to really know what's going on and be awake, you know, as Alex says. And, you know, I just think that uh, a lot of people just need to realize what's going on and not be asleep at the wheel. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for coming out here and supporting us in InfoWar. Now, Darren, we uh, had a chance to meet this great guy. He came out here. He's, he's talking to us about real, real things in the world, not just, you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl. But what are the bigger ramifications of that? What are the ramifications of these tax-exempt organizations donating a measly, like, $200 million to, uh, to local charities? And most of that goes to the Hall of Fame. People need to know about these things, so hopefully they can make the right decisions, not to come out here and spend all their money, spend their bottom dollar to see a game, but to do something real positive for their communities. Well, that's right. Despite all the lemmings that we see that, that blindly follow the, the elite and, and they don't understand what's really going on around them. I and mean, you've talked to InfoWarriors who come up and recognize you and recognize that we're with InfoWars and are, and are glad to talk to you. But at the same time, most people are, uh, are sheep and, and they're uh, very passionate about the Super Bowl. And it's our job. What we want to do is get the word out, get them just as passionate because uh, about saving the Constitution, because once they realize right. what is really going on, you have no choice. I mean, you will. That's, I have, that's I have exactly faith right. in, in our humanity that that once they realize what's truly going on, that they will be passionate about this. That's exactly right. You made an excellent point there, Darren, because these people aren't expendable because a lot of people say that all they care about the Super Bowl, all they just care about Peyton Manning or, you know, whoever the quarterback of the other team is. If we, if we can get these people, take their passion, take their passion for the Super Bowl, take their passion for the Grammy and just redirect that into something positive and useful, we can win this thing. And not to win the Super Bowl, but just win hearts and minds and ideas and get rid of this police state. Well, I can imagine, let's say you, you're bringing your young son or daughter into MetLife Stadium, for example, and next thing you know, you have TSA feeling them up, you know, right before your eyes. That's got to have an effect on you. I mean, I mean. And what, and what does that do to your child, Darren, when you have these TSA-style checkpoints at the Super Bowl? Also, the Viper teams we heard are, are supposed to be around here somewhere. What does that do? You're just conditioning them that it's okay for somebody to touch you what, inappropriately and, if you're going to a football game. And that's the key right there, Jakari. This is all about conditioning. This is indoctrination. This is exactly what they're doing, and this is the word we're trying to get out to people. This isn't normal. Super Bowl fans are, are willing to give up their freedoms in order to feel safe. And like I said, that's going to be across the board. Oh, hey, we, oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Darren. We, uh, we just encountered some fans out here. Yes. They, they very much want to tell us about Broncos. the Super Bowl. The Broncos. 33 to 20. Okay. Put your money on it. Okay, talking about putting money on it. Let's talk. Yes, we're talking about putting money. We're going to put money on it. So let's talk That's about right. uh, the NFL and their tax-exempt status. What do you think about the NFL being a tax-exempt organization? No. 
comment. No comment? No comment. So so it doesn't bother you that the NFL is a tax exempt organization because they donate to charities, but most of their charity money goes to the Hall of Fame? That's okay, as long as the players get paid. As long as the players get paid, you don't, you don't care? I don't care. So you, you don't care about these taxpayer-built uh, stadiums and all that, as long as the, the players get paid? Yes. Yes. They work hard.